After all that anticipation, Google has finally released the beta of Android Q. We have installed it on our Pixel 3 and we're going to go through some of the features that we have found up front. Join us for that. Okay, so here we have the Pixel 3 XL with Android Q installed. One of the first features and a very, very highly requested feature, the dark mode can be switched on on it as expected. For that, you need to go and turn on battery saver mode. It's called the battery saver mode because it turns your interface completely dark and that helps save battery in a, its own small way. But yeah, that's dark mode for you. You can see that some of the apps will use it. The app drawer definitely uses it. Your color screen also reflects on the dark mode. Then uh, other apps, say for example, Google Play Store, these won't be affected by the dark mode and a lot of other apps will not really show you dark mode as of now, like messages, for example. It's a bit of a hit or miss as of now. Even Chrome does not have the dark mode reflected on it at this point. It has the same white interface that we've come to expect. So as you can see, it's nothing's changed here. But yeah, it's a start. At least you know you can expect dark mode as a native support in Android Q going forward. In that, now we'll first check out the theming option. So besides the dark mode, it also has a theming option built right into the OS, which was not there before. So here you can change the accent color. Right now, the default accent color is blue. You can change it to black. Right now, it's we are in the dark mode interface, so that's why it's reflecting as white. We we'll just change that as well. Let's get out of battery saver there. So now the color scheme is more of a black and white monochrome scheme which you can see is reflected everywhere. We kind of like this look. I mean, we might just stick with this, but but let's explore the other options as well. There's green. There's purple. Yeah, we're going to stick with black. You also have the option built in to change the font. Over here, right now it's on device default, but you can change it to Noto Serif, which is not really a very good looking font. We'll go back to the default. You can also change the icon shapes to teardrop, which looks like this. Squircle, which is like a squared circle. And rounded rectangle, which is a rectangle with rounded edges. We'll go to device default as of now. Another interesting feature that's built right into Android Q is the ability to screen record. Now, screenshot was always an option that was available, but now you can also screen record or your actions or probably a game that you're playing by uh, using the default feature. So for that, in developer options, go into feature flags. Over there, select settings, screen record, long press. Just turn that to true. That's it. So now to use screen recording, you have to First, long press the power button. You've always had the screenshot option, but now if you long press this, you will get this menu for screen recording. Over here, you can select the option to record a voiceover. It does not record internal audio even now. Uh, it'll also give you the option to show taps. So we just turn on show taps for this demo and start screen recording. So yeah, it's giving you a warning. And then after that, yeah. So as you can see, it's showing our taps as a circle and then whatever action we are doing, it's going to be recording all of it. To stop screen recording, just go to the notification bar and press stop. Okay, so obviously it's a little buggy, so sometimes it will work, sometimes it will not work. Uh, like it's not stopping for us at this point. All right, so we have the device restarted right here and now we'll get into the freeform mode, that, which is another new feature that's been implemented. Go to the settings and again over there in system, go to advanced, developer options. So there, just go to enable freeform windows and enable that, make that true. 
So let's go to the app switcher and over there we'll select freeform. Okay, so what's this giving us is a window that's not completely maximized. We can see that in the icon out there. Uh, it's a little hard to move around. Ah, there it is. So you can float the window in and around the interface. You should be able to make it much smaller. So as you can see, this has become a freeform window where I can just freely navigate it around. It's like using an app in Windows in a mode that's not completely maximized around the screen. So it's completely functional like this. And uh, this obviously makes a lot more sense on larger screen devices. Like say, for example, if you're using this on a tablet or if you're using this on a dual display or a folding phone, which again is something that is supported on Android Q. So yeah, it's meant for that. Let's see if we can get another window to get into freeform mode along with it. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out with this one. Okay, so as of now, it's uh, just allowing me to use one window in freeform mode, which should not be the case once it becomes, uh, when once the operating system actually starts rolling out. Another new feature that we've seen in Android Q is Wi-Fi sharing mode. Before you could find it on other third-party uh, operating systems, but now it's built into Android Q. So for that, just select the Wi-Fi connection that you would want to share. So right now we're taking our connection and you'll see the share option right here. Tapping on it will ask you for a confirmation. Once you confirmed, it will show you this QR code. Now all you need to do is take any other phone with any other OS and a camera that is capable of reading QR codes like the iPhone's native camera. And that's it. It gives you the option to join Gadgets 360 network right there. So yeah, as you can see, I am going to be connected to the network very soon. There it is. I'm connected to Wi-Fi just as this phone. Google has insisted that they've made uh, Android Q a lot more secure and it requires more permissions and it wants to make you aware of the permissions that are required for using certain apps, especially when it comes to location. So, so in settings, when you select location, and uh, go to app permission. You can see that it's divided between allowed, allowed only while in use and denied. So this option was not there before. So you can see that certain apps are coming under the category of allowed only while in use. So if you want, say for example, Gboard, if you want to change its permission to allow it to access uh, your location at all times or allow it to access it while the app is in use, if you think it's going to help you in any way, you can do that or you can straight away deny deny the location permission for it. Same thing goes for any other app that you may have. Like say, for example, if Maps, it's using location at all time. So if you want to change that to allow only while the app is in use, go ahead and do that. You have the option to do it now. So yeah, you have a lot more control over your uh, location settings at this point, which is a good feature definitely required so that a lot of apps should not be using your location at any given point of time. So one of the smaller new features in Android Q is uh, are the new notification options. Like say, for example, if you long press on any notification, you get the option to block it right there or stay silent. Like the phone is currently in silent mode, so stay silent or alert me when you get a notification as such. So if you decide to block it, you get the message that you won't see these notifications anymore, which you can undo or keep alerting. So you have a little more control over the notifications. So one last thing that we can show you as a smaller feature is the restore icon option. So in case you accidentally delete any of your home screen icons, say for example, keep notes. If I remove that, I get an option to undo it right here immediately. So in case I want to keep an icon on my home page and I accidentally delete it, I don't have to go back to my app drawer and then drag it from there. I can just press undo and it'll all be restored. If you have a Pixel phone, you can try out these features for yourself or even look for more options that we haven't been able to find so far. 
The download link is there in the description along with a how-to on how you can download it on your own Pixel device. But if you find the steps too complicated already, then maybe you should not really try this. If you like this video and want us to do more videos like these, then hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, click the bell icon so you know when there's a new video out for you. And for all things tech, log on to Gadgets360.com.